Good evening, everyone, and apologies for being a little late. Tonight, in somewhat might say is a spooky coincidence, the week before Halloween, we debate Thatcher. The motion <laughs> that this House believes Britain needs a new Thatcher, and we're honoured tonight to be joined by some brilliant guests. Proposing the motion are Dr. Eamon Butler, Dia Chakravarti, and Alice Denby. Meanwhile, standing in opposition, Dr. Richard Johnson is joined by student speakers Alex Horan and Lauren Tucker. Could we give a warm welcome to all our speakers tonight? And may I just add, we've had a message from Lord Howard, who's very sorry to not be here tonight, but he's been held in the House of Lords by a three-line whip, I believe. Yes. Um, so as a quick reminder on format, each paper speaker tonight has 10 minutes to make their case. Between each round of paper speakers, we'll have a short time for speeches from the floor in proposition, opposition, and abstention. And can I please emphasize that if any member wishes to make a point of information, um, can they be kept short, be phrased as a question, and it is the speaker's complete right to refuse them. So please do, um, if you wish to. Right, onwards. Opening the debate tonight is Dr. Eamon Butler. Dr. Butler is the co-founder and director of the Adam Smith Institute. He has written extensively in support of neoliberal economic policy, having been published in The Times, The Guardian, and more. He has previously worked on pensions and welfare issues for the US House of Representatives. Dr. Butler, it's great to have you here tonight. You have the floor. Thank you. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, President. Uh, it's uh, great uh, to be uh, back here at the Union. Um, because I always think that the best audiences are intelligent, well-educated, and a little drunk. <laughs> uh, but you've only got me for a short time because um, I made uh, a promise uh, many years ago that I would only speak in public as long as I could make love in private. So in conclusion, <laughs> let me say that the, the UK does need uh, another Thatcher. I knew Mrs. Thatcher. Um, but a, uh, a little while ago, a very short time ago, um, I made uh, a speech and I said, you can quote me on it. Britain is ruined. Inflation is soaring, growth has stalled, taxes are at record highs, we're deep in debt, our schools and roads are crumbling, we're plagued by strikes in tubes and trains and nurses and doctors and even civil servants. People aren't working because it doesn't pay them to work. Too few people can afford housing. Nobody sees any hope of this changing and nobody really has any pride left in their country. Actually, I said that in 1979, which for me counts as recently. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I know the people at this uh, university are very clever, and you will have jaloused uh, that uh, today things aren't really very much different. And yet, in 1979, uh, we changed all that, and we changed it extremely fast. Soon we went from the lowest growth in, the Europe, in Europe to the highest, uh, from a high tax country to a low tax country, and from debt to surplus, repaying the national debt, uh, from the most strikes in Europe to the least. Uh, and we could stand proud again as a nation and tell the world that Britain was back. And we did that in just a few years. This is possible. And everybody knows how we did it. We were lucky to have Mrs. Thatcher. I still think of her as Mrs. Thatcher, I'm sorry. Who was braver, I think, than any of the 600 odd men uh, in uh, the House of Commons at the time. Somebody who knew what she had to do, what needed to be done for the country, and went on and did it. Uh, who knew that you had to balance the books, that a government couldn't live beyond its means knew that a country had to get itself out of debt, who knew that we needed to restore pride in our country. Uh, someone who didn't simply give in to the headlines, uh, but needed, did what needed uh, to be done. And it's, I think it's telling 
that uh, in the Blair Brown years, uh, they didn't repeal the privatizations, they didn't repeal the trade union reforms, uh, they didn't repeal so much of the Thatcher agenda. They just basked in the economic growth that it had produced. I doubt that many people in this uh, room are parents, but parents, uh, particularly mothers, I think, uh, know that you can't give in to every demand of your children. Uh, you can't let them run riot. You need to give them the self-discipline to become responsible adults. You need to teach them to defer present satisfaction, immediate gratification for long-term happiness. And I think Mrs. Thatcher, as a parent, and indeed the daughter of a shopkeeper, understood uh, these values. And she knew that the same principles applied uh, not just to a family, but to a great nation as well. She, as I say, was not moved by the headline. She did what was right. It's, she used to say of her colleague, Peter Walker, cabinet minister, oh, you know, uh, Peter Walker is so much of a better politician than I am. He always knows what the opinion polls are saying. He always knows uh, what the focus groups are, are telling us to do. I just do things because they're right. <laughs> and she was a bit like that. Um, I mean, I must say, uh, history paints Mrs. Thatcher as a bit of a, 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 a Halloween monster sometimes. Well, I knew, Mrs. I knew Margaret Thatcher. She was courageous, but she was inflexible. She was admirable, but often utterly unbearable. She was loyal, but she was unforgiving. She was resolute, but she was impatient. She was at ease with ideas, but awful with people. But then her weaknesses were the obverse of her strengths. And we need those strengths. She had many strengths, with acute intelligence, great courage, crystal clear, clear vision, and uh, complete self-confidence. Thatcher inherited a broken Britain. She knew that she had to kill inflation stone dead. She did it. She knew that she had to galvanize the economy into life. She did it. She knew that she had to give people in Britain a stake in their country. She did it. To extend home ownership. She did it. To reform our bloated civil service. She did it. To stand up to dictators and tyrants. She did it. To tell the world's oppressed that they are not alone. She did that too. She helped win the Cold War. Yes, of course. Do the uh, dictators include Pinochet? <laughs> <laughs> I have to assure you that in the great scheme of things, Pinochet is not much of a, a dictator. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, he, he, he produced free market uh, reforms in his country, which made it one of the richest in, the, in South America. I, I, don't, I don't condone for one minute, I don't condone for one minute the loss of any life. And I'm sure that he was guilty of many, but not as many as, let us say, Stalin or uh, Lenin or uh, Pol Pot or, um, yeah, well, you could go on. No, I think we've dealt with that point, thanks. Um, but um, nobody, uh, uh, t today we, we have many of 1979's problems, including a Cold War, including dictators, you're quite right. Uh, but nobody uh, we have with a clear vision to solve these things, not on the Tory front bench and not on the Labour. They prefer to talk about maths in schools and which stations the HS2 should stop at or whether to ban disposable vapes. Uh, not the big issues. And uh, there's nobody there who's saying that we need to live within our means, that we need to create wealth uh, before we spend it. And that the world does not actually owe us a living and there's nobody saying that we must stand up to the tyrannies that are currently devouring the world. And sadly, we don't have uh, an Iron Lady anymore saying that, or an Iron anyone for, for that matter. But, I mean, can we fix inflation? Yes, we can. 
can we revive the economy? Yes, we can. Can we make housing affordable? Yes, we can. Can we cut our bloated government? Yes, we can. Can we become proud of Britain once again? Yes, we can. We can do all these things, but for all her many faults, uh, it will take another Margaret Thatcher to do that. That seems to me only common sense, and it's why I ask you to support this motion. Thank you.